Some of this presentation is a review of the history of x-rays and cell biology. It is important to understand this material as we progress through radiation protection though, so it is presented here along with the new material. This material is covered in your text and in the other media presentations that are part of the package of other resources. In keeping with the textbook, important information is denoted by the use of penguin points. When you see the penguin, remember that this is information that's important. The acute effects of radiation exposure were first seen when Nikola Tesla exposed his fingers to x-rays which caused burns to develop in 1896. The genetic effects and increased cancer risks associated with radiation exposure were first recognized in 1927 by Herman Joseph Meller. Still, the effects caused by radiation were not fully understood until the 1940s. The majority of what is known about the effects of radiation came about after August 6, 1945 with the dropping of the nuclear bomb Little Boy on Hiroshima, Japan. An actress named Midori Nada, who was present during the bombing, was studied extensively for radiation poisoning. She died in 1945 and became the first officially documented case caused by radiation poisoning known at that time as atomic bomb disease. There were others who died earlier from radiation exposure due to x-rays. Thomas Edison's assistant, uh, Clarence Daly, was affected by x-rays and, uh, and experienced an inflamed scalp and loss of hair. In 1904, he had developed severe ulcers on both hands and arms. The ulcers soon became cancerous and caused his death. During the 1920s and 1930s, it would not have been unusual for a radiologic technologist to visit the hematology laboratory once a week for routine blood examination. Before the introduction of personal radiation monitors, periodic blood examination was the only way to monitor x-ray workers. Today we use different types of dosimetry devices to monitor radiation exposure to healthcare workers. There are two classifications of the effects of radiation to the human body. One is known as non-stochastic effects or deterministic effects and are characterized by threshold doses below which they do not occur. In other words, non-stochastic effects have a clear relationship between the exposure and the effect. In addition, the magnitude of the effect is directly proportional to the size of the dose. Non-stochastic effects typically result when very large doses of radiation are received in a short amount of time. These effects will often be evident within hours or days. Examples of non-stochastic effects would include erythema, which is skin reddening like a sunburn, uh, skin and tissue burns, cataract formation, sterility, radiation sickness, and even death. Each of these effects differ from the others in that both its threshold dose and the time over which the dose was received that caused the effect. Another is stochastic effects, which are effects that occur by chance and which may occur without a threshold level of dose, but whose probability is proportional to the dose and whose severity is independent of the dose. The stochastic effects are cancer and hereditary effects. Acute radiation syndrome is the sequence of events following high-level radiation exposure leading to death within days or weeks. There are three separate syndromes. These syndromes are dose-related and follow a distinct course of clinical responses. They are hematological death, gastrointestinal death, and central nervous system death. In addition to these syndromes, there are two periods that are, so are associated with acute radiation lethality. They are the prodromal period and the latent period. The immediate response of radiation sickness is the prodromal period. After the period of initial radiation sickness, a period of apparent well-being occurs. This is the latent period. Uh, the latent period can extend from less than an hour to weeks. Two, these two periods can be seen in the three syndromes that were previously named. The hematological syndrome is characterized by a reduction in white cells, red cells, and platelets. Radiation doses in the range of approximately 200 to 1,000 rad uh, produce the hematological uh, syndrome. The patient initially experiences mild symptoms of the prodromal syndrome, which appear in a matter of a few hours, and they may uh, persist for several days. The latent period that follows 
can extend for as long as four weeks and is characterized by a general feeling of wellness. There are no obvious signs of illness, although the number of cells in the peripheral blood declines during this time. The period of manifest illness is characterized by possibly vomiting, mild diarrhea, malaise, lethargy, and fever. Each of the types of blood cells follows a rather characteristic pattern of cell depletion. If the dose is not lethal, recovery begins in two to four weeks, but as long as six months may be required for full recovery. If the radiation injury is severe enough, the reduction in blood cells continues unchecked until the body's defense against infection is, is nil. Uh, just before death, hemorrhage and dehydration may be pronounced and death occurs because of generalized infection, electrolyte imbalance, and dehydration. Gastrointestinal syndrome is where there is damage to the cells lining the intestines. GI death occurs principally because of severe damage to these cells. Radiation doses of approximately 1,000 to 5,000 rad result in the GI syndrome. The pedromal symptoms of vomiting and diarrhea occur within hours of exposure and persist for hours to as long as days. Uh, a latent period that follows is normally three to five days during which there is no symptoms that are present. The manifest illness period begins with a second wave of nausea and vomiting followed by diarrhea. The victim experiences a loss of appetite, anorexia, and may become lethargic. The diarrhea persists and becomes more severe, leading to loose and then watery and bloody stools. Supportive ther therapy cannot prevent the rapid progression of symptoms that ultimately, ultimately leads to, uh, to death within four to 10 days of exposure. Intestinal cells are normally in a rapid state of proliferation and are continuously being replaced by new cells the turnover time for this cell renewal system in a normal person is three to five days. Radiation exposure kills the most sensitive of those cells, the stem cells, and this controls the length of time uh, until death. When the intestinal lining is completely denuded of functional cells, fluids pass uncontrollably across the intestinal membrane, electrolyte balance is destroyed, and conditions uh, promote infection. As doses consistent with the GI syndrome, uh, measurable and even severe hematological changes do also occur. It takes a longer time for the cell renewal system of the blood to develop mature cells from the stem cell population. Therefore, there is not enough time for maximum hematological effects really to occur. The central nervous system, or CNS syndrome, of affects the, the brain, spinal cord, nerves, that sort of, the, the central nervous system. The ultimate cause of death in the C, uh, CNS syndrome is an elevated uh, fluid content of the brain. After a radiation dose in excess of approximately 5,000 rad uh, is received, a series of signs and symptoms occur that lead to death within a, mower, a matter of hours to days. First, severe nausea and vomiting begin, usually within just minutes of exposure. During this initial onset, the patient may become extremely nervous and confused, uh, may describe a burning sensation in the skin, may lose vision, and can even lose consciousness within the first hour. This may be followed by a latent period that lasts up to 12 hours, during which earlier symptoms subside or disappear. The latent period is followed by the period of manifest illness during which the symptoms of the prodromal stage return but are more severe. The person becomes disoriented, loses muscle coordination, has difficulty breathing, uh, may go into convulsive seizures, uh, experiences a loss of equilibrium, ataxia and lethargy, lapses into a coma and then dies. Uh, regardless of the medical atti attention given to the patient, the symptoms of manifest illness uh, re appear rather suddenly and always with extreme severity. At radiation doses high enough to produce CNS effects, the outcome is always death within a few days of exposure. 
the CNS syndrome is characterized by an increase in the intracranial pressure, uh, inflammatory changes in the blood vessels of the brain, uh, which is vas vasculitis, uh, and inflammation of the meninges, meningitis. Uh, a dose is sufficient to produce the CNS damage. Damage to all other organs in the body is equally severe. The classic radiation-induced changes in the GI tract and the hematological system cannot occur because there is insufficient time between exposure and death for them to even appear. As the whole body radiation doses increase, the average time between exposure and death decreases. This is known as the mean survival time. All early radiation responses, local tissue damage is a good example, follow a threshold type dose re uh, response relationship. This is characteristic of a deterministic re radiation response. A minimum dose is necessary to produce a deterministic response. Once that threshold dose has been exceeded, the severity of the response increases with the increasing dose. Uh, when the whole body radiation does increase, the average time between exposure and death decreases. This is known as the mean survival time. As radiation dose increases from 200 to 1000 rad, the uh, mean survival time or MSI decreases from about 60 days to around four days. When a part of the body is irradiated, a higher dose is required to reduce a response. Every organ and tissue in the body can be affected by partial body irradiation. The effect is cell death resulting in shrinkage of the organ or tissue. This can cause a lack of function for the organ or tissue or it can be followed by recovery. Local tissues that can be affected immediately by the radiation are skin, gonads, and bone marrow. The skin and all of the additional accessory structures such as sweat glands, hair follicles, and sensory receptors are all affected by radiation. The first observable skin response to radiation is erythema. This is what we see in sunburns where the skin gets red. This is a nonlinear threshold dose response and depends on the individual uh, individual's radio sensitivity, the dose rate, and the side of, size of the irradiated skin field. Another response to radiation exposure is epilation or hair loss. It can progress to ulcerations, uh, necrosis, the atrophy of sweat glands, uh, the regeneration of skin cells, hair follicles, capillaries, and cancers. Uh, the human gonads are particularly sensitive to radiation. Responses as low as 10 rads uh, have been uh, observed. Because they produce the germ cells that control fertility and heredity, uh, their response to radiation has been studied extensively. Uh, ovaries and testes produce the, the agonia and the spermatogonia, which mature into uh, ovum and sperm cells, respectively. In a female, the stem cells of the ovaries, the agonia, multiply only during fetal life. They reach a maximum number of several million and then begin to decline due to spontaneous degeneration. Starting at puberty, ova or the mature germ cell are ejected on a regular basis. Only 400 to 500 ova are available for fertilization. That's the number of years of menstruation times about 13 per year. In males, the germ cells of the testes are continually being produced from stem cells and provide a sustaining cell renewal system. The stem cells of male are the spermatogonia, which mature into spermatocyte. Uh, these multiply and develop into spermatid, which finally forms spermatozoa or sperm. This process takes three to five weeks. Irradiation of the gonads destroys fertility and has been shown to produce genetic mutations. Even moderate doses of 25 to 30 rats have been associated with measurable increases in genetic mutations in females. In males, radiation uh, doses as low as 10 rad can reduce the uh, number of spermatozoa. The, hemato the hemopoietic system consists of bone marrow, circulating blood, and lymphoid tissue, uh, such as the lymph nodes, spleen, and thymus. 
The principal effect of radiation is a depressed number of blood cells in the peripheral circulation system. Uh, the lymphoty lymphocytes and spermatogonia are the most radiosensitive cells in the body. Lymphocytes are related to immune responses. Uh, granulocytes are used to fight bacteria and thrombocytes are involved in the clotting of blood to prevent hemorrhage. Erythrocytes are the red blood cells that transport oxygen uh, throughout the body. Following exposure to ionizing radiation, the lymphocytes are the first cells to become affected. These cells are reduced in number within minutes or hours following exposure and are very slow to recover. The depletion of platelets following irradiation develops uh, more slowly followed by the thrombocytes. Erythrocytes are less sensitive than other blood cells. This appears to be due to their long uh, lifetime in the peripheral blood. Injury to these cells is not apparent for a matter of weeks and may take six months to a year uh, for total recovery. The cytogenics is the study of the genetics of cells, particularly cell chromosomes. Radiation-induced chromosome aberrations uh, follow a non-threshold dose response uh, relationship. Chromosomes damages uh, take on three different forms. They are chromatid deletion, dicentric chromosome aberration, and reciprocal translocations. Uh, these were covered in detail in the study of cell biology, and there are links provided in the student material that you can go to uh, for a review of this information, and it is covered in more detail in your text.